Welcome to the Medical Device Made Easy podcast. Here is Munir Alazuzi from easymedicaldevice.com. And today we will help you to understand what is a significant change and what to do with it. And for that, I have with me Martin Witt from Tuf Sud, who will help us to understand that and to understand also what you should tell or uh, what you should expect from a notified body if you have an, uh, a significant change. So Martin, welcome to the Medical Device Made Easy podcast. Hi, Monia. Thank you for having me again. And I'm looking forward uh, to this episode. Yeah. Yeah, we, we, we were also, uh, we were already discussing before uh, on, the, on the podcast uh, about uh, the, on, on an episode of the podcast. So uh, people maybe know you already, but in case there is some new people that don't know you. So please, can you just make a, a short introduction? Sure. So uh, my name is Martin Witte. I'm uh, in TÜV Süd, uh, responsible for uh, strategic business development. Started like 2014, I guess. Yes. And uh, did a lot of audits and product assessments for high risk class three devices, mainly on active medical implants. No, great. So, uh, yeah, w w as I said, today we will try to focus on specifically significant changes. Uh, but before to talk about that, so uh, we have within the UMDR and also IVDR, um, an article regarding the transition period. So for MDI, it's 120. So mainly um, what means this transition period? So we have by the 26th of May, 2021 for MDR uh, to normally apply MDR, but unless you are fall falling under a certain group or certain exceptions that are on Article 120. So can we have a, a, a short summary about this and what is, what is this transition period? Yeah, so the Article 120 is intended to take care of the products that are still marketed under the MDD, AIMDD, while they were um, then canceled, so to say, and become void, the MDR kicks in and is applicable. So now you need to do something with these devices that are still on the market. And the idea of Article 120 is that manufacturers can perform some changes with the exception on significant changes. And using that term is maybe a bit odd because that term is used elsewhere, but here the significant changes are on design and intended purpose. So you can do changes as long as they are not significant on design or intended purpose. So um, we, have, we have those, those companies that are, Uh, that are thinking, oh, I need to put my, my product under MDD before the date of application so I can um, sell my product until the expiration of my, of my certificate. Um, but a lot of people are not really understanding, if I can say, this stop that can happen. So the, if, there is, if there is a significant change, as you mentioned mainly, What can happen to this company? So what is the, the thing that maybe they didn't really understood about, about this transition? Well, it could happen that when they are, for example, placing new devices on the market under an old certificate, and that is then observed in a surveillance audit that the certificate gets withdrawn and that they are no longer allowed to put any products onto the market because in the transition period, there are strict limitations in what you are allowed to do. And if you do not comply to these requirements, the worst case scenario is actually a withdrawal of certificate. And that is then coming along with all the implications that has for you as a manufacturer with recall and all the legal stuff you have to go through then. So we say that mainly the, the significant change can stop your certificate, can, can stop everything. So um, those, those people that are maybe listening today, so where they can have a better understanding of what is a, a significant change, what can they consider as a significant change uh, so that they can maybe review that before they are applying the change. Yeah, so um, luckily here we have something pretty neat because Um, I haven't seen such a document in, in the past on uh, a really guidance, a flowchart where we see the MDCG 2020-3 is helping manufacturers in making the decision if their change is now significant in a meaning for design and intended purpose or if not. So uh, this, this document uh, is mainly showing you um, 
if we see this change, yes, it is, or no, it is not a significant okay. change. So uh, do you think there can be some interpretation for people when they are reading that? Um, well, yes, it, that's always the case. I mean, such a decision tree was in place for several years, for example, in Canada, and that was pretty helpful for, for manufacturers. So when I was working in industry, I was always very happy with that uh, Canada guidance. And on the other side, we had in the EU a guidance document that didn't, that helped us a bit. Um, but now this one, the flow chart, of course, leaves room for interpretation. Um, but I think that's limited. So uh, I, I, you are right, if I can say, regarding the, the previous uh, legislation about the significant change. It was a struggle because we were uh, s said by some notified bodies, yes, it's fine. And some others, no, it's not fine. So there was kind of... <laughs> yes. uh, not harmonized uh, decision on that. Uh, I mean, I, I had I worked for a company that had two notified bodies for two different line of products, and for one line of product, they said no, you should not. It's not a significant change, but for another, yes, it is, and it was really confusing in the at the company. So, do you think now with the MDR, maybe with this MDCG um, guidance, there will still be this maybe non alignment or non harmonization between notified bodies? Um. I fear yes, because um, I mean, I totally agree with what you're saying. I also made that experience on, on both ends. So in industry side, as well as an auditor and product assessor, that there is a different understanding in what is significant or what is actually then also reportable and what is not uh, significant and thus can just be documented in your QMS. I do believe that this will continue for quite a while. I hope that on basis of 2020-3, there is a certain alignment, yes, and maybe the alignment is much, much more uh, in place than it was in the previous times. But yeah, it, it's a guess. So I hope for it being better, but I not 100% belief in it. Yeah, I, I hope that there will be really uh, some, some alignments because um, for now, what I'm advising is to contact your notified body, if I can say, uh, when you have this kind of um, discussion because only them can, if I can say, approve or can, can, can move forward with you uh, instead of guessing and then at the end maybe ma making this mistake. So, um, so um, in terms of examples, as we said, for, for, for significant changes. We have, as you mentioned, the example of intended purpose of design and performance. So we have also the changes related to software, uh, changes related to material, changes related to sterilization method that you can see on the MDCG 2020-3. Uh, so for example, for software, um, something that maybe people are, are thinking is the fact that um, because we'll have an update of our software due to, for example, for um, um, a Windows update or whatever, that this is a significant change. So, but when you read the MDCG guidance, it says, no, it's not a significant change. So there is a lot of all those assumptions about, for example, software where we suppose there is changes that will happen to them a lot. So what, what can you say about that? So here it's important, and this is really the tricky situation. We have the 2020-3 that's defining significant change around design and intended purpose. And we have other guidances defining a change being significant or not. Now, the 120 limitation is when your change is significant to design and intended purpose as defined in MDCG 2020-3, then you're supposed to turn over to MDR. Now, if your change is based on your general change assessment, a significant change, but not a significant change in context of design and intended purpose, you may still do the change, discuss with your notified body and do a change application with your notified body and they will release the change or will provide you with a confirmation statement that that change can be introduced and you can still remain under MDDA or MDD. So it is extremely important that you distinguish between significant change and significant change. <laughs> okay. So it's, it's uh, as, as I said, this is really a, a borderline area where we have all yes. that. So uh, contacting your notified body, I think, is, is the great idea. So if, if we contact 
you not tribal like chief sud now if if i contact you before what will you do so will you make an evaluation or it, will you give us an advice what is exactly your the activity that you will do so okay, if you would have such a situation where in your quality management system you define this being a significant change that shall be reported to the notified body then you would um, hand in an application for a change and we will do an assessment on that so we will also check if that is a change that might force you to go into mdr but what we will do is as if, as we do it today under the mdda mdd you submit a change notification we'll assess that and in the end you will get a kind of approval for that and um, then you can continue under the mdda mdd when the change forces you into mdr then um, we'll let you know and then you because then you will not receive a change approval for that so you're not allowed to introduce it um, but you then have to ask for an mdr application or mdr certification yeah I, i think i think this is this is this can be the case that oh we discover that we will have a change that will uh, uh, i mean the case can happen mainly because there is maybe no no real discussion inside the company we have a design team that is starting to execute a change like they are executing always executing and at the end we, they don't really understand the consequence of this change that it can fall under mdr and we discover that at the last minute uh, that this this will happen so um I imagine that if the company has to then after the decision to follow MDR it can be a bit difficult if they are not ready at all for MDR. Mm. Yes. Yes, that that will then stop this change being implemented and if you're not ready for MDR at that point in time then you of course have a problem. Yes. But if this change is needed because for example of a customer complaint of issues mm -hmm. on the market or whatever so can they continue to sell the product as is while they know there is an issue and waiting for mdr or i i, I wouldn't uh, as i never do recommendations i wouldn't think that is a, re a reasonable approach so if you have an issue on the market you have a chance to discuss with the competent authority to introduce a change even though it might affect design and intended purpose and when the com competent authority tells you okay it's fine introduce it then we are actually a bit bypassed because um, we, we cannot say it is non-significant in accordance to 120. But we can then say, okay, you have talked to an authority, you agreed upon introducing this change. We are aware of this, but this is not part of our direct responsibility of releasing that change then. That is then a discussion with the authority. Okay, so yeah. it means yeah, it's really, it's really that uh, uh, possibility that the authority can bypass and can can make a decision uh, for you. But is the C certificate still valid because you are the one providing the certificate? So, okay, if you have a huge market issue with the device where you wouldn't introduce a change, then of course we would, uh, in context of our post-market surveillance activities. Uh, also consider maybe a withdrawal of a certificate, yes. Okay. Yeah. So that is a valid approach to, to when there is a problem to maybe take the certificate Yeah. Um, from the market and thus the products. Exactly. I mean, uh, you you are, I mean, putting your CE, if I can say the CE with your number on the product means that you agree, but if the product is not uh, fine with on the market, so I, I completely understand that the notified body will say, no, we, we are not backing you up on, on this, so no, yes. no, not possible. Yes. Um, now let's make the scenario that uh, we are after the date of application. Uh, one of the two auditor arrive to a company. They discuss about whatever. They arrive to the design phase and they see that they have made a change during this transition period that is really significant. The company maybe, let's say, that didn't really understood that it was a significant change. They mm. thought it was a normal change, but mm. it's a significant change. What's happening now? So are they stopping immediately to sell products? Uh, do they, is there any commission that is reviewing that? And what's, what's the process mm. after that? Okay, so first of all, before that, we expect customers to send us an inquiry in such a before such a situation arises. Yeah. Yeah? So if the company is in doubt, they should inquire. They should send it to us and we make then a decision significant, not significant. That's, that's okay. 
Um, if a situation like this happens, I think the first issue would have been they haven't acquired. Yeah. yeah so first issue company side. Now in the audit, we figure something out. Okay, so what does this mean? That typically means that in the audit, you would receive a non-conformity. Exactly. Yeah? A major one because you're obviously um, not following the regulations and put devices on the market that are actually not covered by your certification, so it's very incompliant. Um, that major non-conformity can now, in the process of post-audit activities, of course, result in a withdrawal of a certificate. However, that is not a decision that is just made in the audit and then we take away the certificate. This is a, this is a formal process and there is, of course, again, independency um, uh, uh, elements in there that the person who is observing something will, in, uh, will initiate a withdrawal process and then the decision about a withdrawal is then made by the certification board and um, based on the information collected during an audit. So there is a little bit of bureaucracy behind it, but I think this bureaucracy is necessary in order to really make the right decision. Okay, so um, I think it's, it's an important point here because uh, just for people to understand the consequence, but um, let's say that now you discover that you have the non-conformity, it's a major one, you will have the withdrawal of the certificate. Are you also asking this company or maybe talking with the competent authority to recall those products or it's products that are on the market so you cannot do anything with them? So we typically don't ask companies to recall a product that is the responsibility of authorities when they order someone to recall something, but in the end, it's the responsibility of the manufacturer to initiate the necessary activities to prevent further distribution of such devices and where these devices, devices are already on the market to get them back. Because the products are not covered by the CE certification, so they are actually illegally on the market. And what happens then? That's more on the court and law side of things where we are not directly involved. Okay, yeah. no, I think it's a, it's a good point here. So so yeah, be careful then. <laughs> Try to to do the right thing with your significant change. So um, Martin, so if if we have kind of a good advice or a good 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 significant change practices, if I can say, if we can invent this kind of wording, so uh, what would it be? So if we can summarize what we said today. Well. Again, so uh, as we said in your example, if you are in doubt, inquire with your notified body because um, that that is not this is not consulting. Yeah, I mean, if you're uh, sending the plan of a change to your notified body that is clearly covered by the MDR because we are supposed to evaluate changes. So if if there is not 100% clarity, also from the basis of MDC 2020-3, inquire with the notified body. And from there, I think you are on the safe side. So I think the most important thing here is, as always, communicate with your counterpart. And the discussions lately coming up with consultancy, yes or no, in this case, it's clearly not consultancy because we are doing this in context of conformity assessment. Okay. This is an assessment. Yeah, yeah. No, I think it's it's a it's a great point. So uh, don't be afraid. <laughs> Go and discuss with your notified body. I think it's a, it's the right thing. So. Um, just maybe to talk about TÜVSUD a bit, a bit more. So um, I think um, a lot of notified bodies are now looking for auditors because they need that and also to, to be able to support all the manufacturers. So uh, if tomorrow I want to be a, a TÜVSUD auditor, is there a kind of a place to go where I can apply and say, I want, or maybe there is, are you having some open positions like in certain countries or certain regions? And wh where, can I, where can I get information about that? So the very best place to find our job offerings is our website. So that's tuvsud.com. And then there is a career section. And in that career section, you actually can also pick the region where you want to find a job. And um, there should be quite some offerings for auditors, product specialists, but also management positions. Yes. 
Okay, no, I think great. So if you are interested to be a, a tube auditor, so a tube suit auditor, so don't hesitate to go to the to the website. I will put the the, the link on on the show notes so people can go uh, and look at, at that uh, specifically. Um, okay, so Martin, really thank you. I think really it provides a lot of information. I hope these people uh, will be really understanding uh, that significant change can be a, a major issue for them and it can stop completely their transition period. So please contact your notified body. Uh, if you have any, I mean, if you think of any change and if you think that it can be really a, a significant change uh, and that, uh, yeah, that can really save, save your certificate, save uh, everything on, on, your, on your product. So great. Uh, okay, Martin. So really thank you for that. Thank you for, for your help. Uh, and I wish you a nice day. Thank you, Monia. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.